On August 29, 2016, we said farewell to comedy legend Gene Wilder, who passed away from complications of Alzheimer's disease at 83. Wilder's work left an indelible impression, especially his classic collaborations with Mel Brooks, Mel Stewart, Woody Allen, and Richard Pryor. As we take the time to mark his passing and celebrate his career, let's take a look back at his life and explore some things you probably didn't know about this beloved star. Gene Wilder wasn't his real name. Wilder was born Jerome Silverman in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. His father and maternal grandparents were Russian Jewish immigrants. While Wilder identified as Jewish, he never considered himself particularly religious. What do you call this book? Torah. In his 2005 memoir, Wilder explained, I have no other religion. I feel very Jewish and I feel very grateful to be Jewish, but I don't believe in God or anything to do with the Jewish religion. As his acting career took off in off-Broadway stage productions, he decided he needed a stage name. And I didn't want to be introduced as Jerry Silberman. I couldn't picture Jerry Silberman in Hamlet. He chose Gene for both a cousin he admired and the character of Eugene Gant in the novel Look Homeward Angel. The last name Wilder was inspired by Thornton Wilder, an author whose work he greatly enjoyed. Meeting with Mel Wilder's acting career started with stage productions, both on and off Broadway. After a role in the 1961 production of Roots, Wilder took a role in 1963's The Complacent Lover, for which he received a Derwent Award for Best Performance by an Actor in a Non-Featured Role. His next stage role in Mother Courage and Her Children helped forge a life-altering connection. I was in a play called Mother Courage by Bertolt Brecht, starring Anne Bancroft, whose boyfriend was Mel Brooks, and Mel came by to pick her up each evening after the show. Brooks helped Wilder through a scene that he was struggling with, and the rest is history. Brooks was writing a screenplay called Springtime for Hitler, which would eventually become the 1968 movie The Producers. Brooks felt that Wilder was perfect for the role of Leo Bloom, and his Oscar-nominated appearance in the movie launched his budding film career. Gosh, Doc, I cannot function under these conditions. You're making me extremely nervous. Willy Wonka's amazing introduction. When Wilder auditioned for the title role in 1971's Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, director Mel Stewart offered Wilder the part practically on the spot. Wilder accepted, but under one condition. He wanted to give audiences a very special first introduction to Wonka. Wilder told Stewart, I'd like to do it if I can come out and all the crowd quiets down and I'm, I'm using a cane. Oh my God, Willy Wonka is crippled. And I walk slowly and you can hear a pin drop and my cane gets stuck in a brick. And I do, I fall over on my face and do a forward somersault and jump up and they all start to applaud. He said, what do, Mel Stewart said, what do you want to do that for? I said, because no one will know from that point on whether I'm lying or telling the truth. Trading Places When Wilder and Richard Pryor paired up in the hit 1976 film Silver Streak, they struck comedy gold, revealing a seemingly effortless screen chemistry they'd be called upon to recapture repeatedly throughout their careers. According to director John Landis, if it hadn't been for Pryor's problems with addiction, he would have seen them star in Trading Places instead of Dan Aykroyd and Eddie Murphy. Four Marriages Wilder married Mary Mercer in 1960, and after a divorce, he was married again in 1967 to Mary Joan Schultz. But after his second divorce in 1974, he remained unattached. That was until 1981, when he met Saturday Night Live actress Gilda Radner on the set of the movie Hanky Panky. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night! They married in 1984, but the marriage would be cut short by devastating news. Radner started experiencing fatigue and upper leg pain while filming 1986's Haunted Honeymoon and after several false diagnoses, she was diagnosed with stage five ovarian cancer, which took her life in 1989. And I did believe with all my heart that she was gonna pull through and survive. I was an idiot. During the filming of See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Wilder met Karen Webb, who coached him in his lip reading for the role. I had no idea, I'm sorry. Now you know, can I get the job? After Radner's death, the two reconnected, marrying in 1991. Webb and Wilder would remain together until his passing in 2016. He didn't miss Hollywood. After retiring from acting, Wilder only offered a handful of interviews. In his exhaustive 2002 interview with Larry King, Wilder revealed why he hadn't been seen in Hollywood for years. He simply doesn't like it. I don't want it to come out funny, but I don't like show business. <laughs> I love, I love acting in films. I love it. But you don't I love like painting. I like the show, but I don't like the business. He beat cancer. Wilder himself was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in 1999. 
After undergoing chemotherapy and radiation treatments, his lymphoma entered remission, but doctors let Wilder know there was a good chance the cancer would return. His oncologist recommended a stem cell transplant. After the radiation and the chemo, they came in, thought out the stem cells, sang happy birthday to me. <laughs> and, I, and I said, what? Said, this is the beginning of your new life. The radical treatment worked, and the cancer was in complete remission by 2002. But in 2013, Wilder would be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, which took his life in 2016. Ella Fitzgerald helped him say goodbye. Wilder loved Fitzgerald's music, and his nephew, Jordan Walker Perlman, described Gene's final moment in a statement from his family. Quote, As our hands clutched, and he performed one last breath, the music speaker, which was set to random, began to blare out one of his favorites, Ella Fitzgerald. There's a picture of he and Ella meeting at a London bistro some years ago that was among his cherished possessions. She was singing Somewhere Over the Rainbow as he was taken away. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know which Gene Wilder role is your favorite.